basketball, hoops, round ball. No matter what you call it, the game has one simple goal, to put the ball in the basket. Nothing is more fundamental to the game than good shooting, but for too long it has been considered an elusive skill. On this tape, you'll meet a man who knows that shooting can be learned and mastered by simply knowing and practicing the basics. Many consider him the top shooting coach in the country, and he has taught every level of player, from high school to the pros. We always call him the king. His real name is Herb McGee. As a 5-foot, 10-inch, 150-pound college player, he scored an amazing 2,235 points, leading his team to 75 victories. A two-time All-American, McGee was drafted by the Boston Celtics, but chose to pass up the NBA for a career in coaching. In 34 years as the head coach at Philadelphia University, formerly Philadelphia Textile, he has amassed close to 700 wins. Coach McGee's career includes 19 postseason tournaments and an NCAA Division II National Championship. Named Regional Coach of the Year four times, National Coach of the Year twice, and inducted into the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame, Herb McGee has coached 28 1,000-point scorers and nine All-Americans. For over 30 years, he has been nationally renowned as a shooting instructor in demand at basketball camps and clinics around the country. He has tutored professional ball players from the Pacers, Kings, Nets, and 76ers. Now it's your turn. Welcome to Nothing But Net, a shooting clinic with the master himself, Coach Herb McGee. All right, now, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about shooting today, but uh, before we get started, let me kind of give you an idea about some of the stuff that I do and how I got started in this business. Uh, I was a student here and graduated in 1963. At that time, we only had about 350 students in the whole school. Now there's over 2,000. At that time, it was called the Philadelphia Textile Institute. They changed it to Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science, and this past year, Philadelphia University. Now, next year will mark the 34th year with me as the head basketball coach here. So we've been through a lot of different things. And one of the things that we've been through a lot of are basketball camps, just like yours. All right? 34 years ago, a guy called me on the phone. He said, Coach McGee, we need you to speak at our camp. So I drove to the Pocono Mountains. He said, what would you like to talk on? I said, well, I was a good shooter. Let me uh, talk about shooting. He said, okay. So I did. And ever since then, I have lectured at hundreds of camps and always about how to shoot a basketball. Now, some of the other stuff we do related to shooting. We will work with young boys, young girls, high school kids, college kids, high school teams, college teams, NBA teams, NBA players. And the one common thing that I've noticed throughout this is, and the statement I always make to kids and to people about shooting is this statement. Anybody, in my opinion, can become a good shooter. Anybody. Now, the reason there aren't more good shooters nowadays is because people refuse to practice. People do not like to practice. And I'm going to demonstrate the proper way to practice to you in a second. But I'm going to give you an idea about a couple guys. One guy we worked with a couple years ago was a prominent NBA basketball player. His agent called me. We set up a time. I went up to Connecticut, spent three days with this guy. Morning, afternoon session, back and forth with the guy, taught him everything I know about shooting. When I finished, I spoke to his agent. His agent said to me, Coach McGee, how'd it go? My answer was, he's a wonderful young man, and he's probably a terrific player, but he will never, ever be a, much, be a very good shooter. And why? Here's the reason. You ready? He doesn't like to practice. Last year, I flew out to an NBA team in the Midwest. Had this young fellow. We worked for a couple of hours. Came back. He called me on the phone. Coach McGee, can I come in? He came in the gym. He flew into Philadelphia and spent two days with me, and I could not get him out of this gym. He wanted to do more and more and more and more. So I called his coach, and I told him, you got yourself a guy here. This guy's tough. So I don't know if he's a real good player, but I do know one thing. He will become a good shooter. Okay, so it's never too late and never too early. The basic principles of shooting are the same. It doesn't matter if you're this big, high school, college, or pro. Shooting is shooting. The one thing you need to do is, A, have the proper technique, and B, practice. Practice practice, practice. Now the problem is, here's the way most kids practice. They go out to a basketball court, 
pick up a basketball, shoot the basketball at the basket, and they miss. Why? Well, nobody really knows. Nobody really knows. Here's my point. You go out to practice your shot. If you shoot the basketball and it doesn't go in, there's a reason why. Okay? Now, this is me as a kid. I'm outside practicing my shot. Everybody else is playing down the other end. They're saying to me, Hurt, come on down and play. We need a guy. Not yet. Not until I take 500 shots, because I'm going to do it every single day. And every single day, I shot the ball 500 times all throughout grade school, high school, and even in college. I'd go to a playground. I grew up in West Philly. I'd go to a playground and shoot it 500 times. And if I missed, here's what I used to do. I'd say one of these shots misses. Let's say that shot missed. I would go to my book and mark down that the shot missed. No. I would mark down where it missed. When you release the basketball out of your hands, it can do one of five things. The first thing is a good thing. That's in the basket. The next four are bad. And these are the four things. When you shoot it, you can hit the front rim, the back rim, or the right side, or the left side. So when I was a kid, playground, shoot them up. If I hit the front rim, I figured out why. If I hit the back rim, I figured out why. If I hit the right side or the left side, I figured out why. And I worked to correct my mistakes. Okay? So now when I shoot it, and even in college when I shot it, and in high school when I shot it, I looked the same each and every time the ball left my hands. Okay? My main goal when I shoot is to make sure that each time the ball leaves my hands, it leaves my hands the exact same way every time. Next time you shoot, have somebody film you. Take a bunch of shots. Each time you shoot it, hold your follow through until the ball gets to the basket. And then you'll be able to tell what you did right and what you did wrong. OK? So now we're going to get into it, and I'm going to show you the four things you need to know in order to become a good shooter. You ready? Here they are. One, shooting hand. Two, guide hand. Three, how to use your legs. Four, what do you aim for? Those four things. First one, shooting hand. Uh, Greg, when you started playing basketball, we learned the fundamentals of the game. Give me them. Dribble, pass, and shoot. Dribbling, passing, and shooting. Now, when you dribble, pass, or shoot, Ned, what, what's the uh, only part of your hand that never touches the ball? The palm. Everybody knows you can't bounce it like this. Everybody knows you can't pass it like this. And everybody should know that you can't shoot it like this. You can't put the ball in your palm when you shoot a basketball. Because with the ball in your palm, there's one of two ways you get it out of your palm. Little kids, they don't shoot, they shot put. Drop the ball to the shoulder and throw it. No way, no way. Older kids, listen. Now this will confuse you because what? The ball looks pretty good, doesn't it? Watch, I'll make it worse. I'll put it in. You're going to sit there and tell me, well, what's wrong with that shot if you're making it? Watch what I'm doing. I'm putting the ball in my palm. And I am, watch this expression, gang. I am rolling the ball down my hand. Watch. Watch. Palm. Roll. Palm. Roll. A lot of spin. Nobody guarding me. Nothing to it. Now the game starts. Here comes a guy out to play defense. I go up for my shot. Don't look at me or Greg. Look at the ball in my palm. Ball laying in the palm. You ready? Chances are that that ball can slip. Chances are that that basketball can slide. OK? How do you know it? Catch for me. You ready? Proper follow through. Watch this follow through. What the heck is that? Shoot a basketball with your thumb? Come on, will you? You don't have to be genius to figure out you can't shoot the ball with your thumb. Other kids come up to shoot, and the ball slides off their hand. Follow through looks like that. Just like this, where you shoot an air ball or a brick. Watch, you can't shoot the ball with your thumb, and you can't shoot the ball with your pinky. The last thing to touch the basketball on your hand, on your hand is what, honey? Fingertips. Fingertips. All right, now watch. I got five. 
here? No way. How about there? No way. So the answer is, more specific than fingertips, it's these two fingers. I'm looking at the paper. I actually have at home old magazines. And one of the magazines I have is a picture of Larry Bird. He's on the front cover of Sports Illustrated playing against the Lakers in the NBA playoffs. It's one of them things you just throw in, your, in the drawer someplace. The other day I pull, pull it out and here's what I saw. I saw Bird taking the shot. Now Bird, as we know, is one of the great shooters of all time. For a guy six foot nine, it doesn't matter what size he was, he's a fabulous shooter. Watch. Some cameraman caught him like this. Look, boom. The ball resting on those two fingers. So now, every single time you practice shooting, every single time you shoot the ball, with pressure or no pressure, you must get the basketball to come off of those two fingers. Here's how you do it. When you pick the basketball up, grip it. Don't put your hands on it. Grip it. And here's the grip. You ready? Listen to this noise. The first part of your grip sounds like this. Watch. There it is right there. That's the noise you want. It doesn't sound like this. And it doesn't sound like this. It doesn't sound like fingers or palm. It sounds like your hand at camp outside or when you kids play outside. Next time you finish playing in a game outside or just shooting them up outside, take a look at your hands. They'll get dirty. If this court was dirty, my hands would get dirty. Watch where there will be dirt. No dirt here and no dirt here. If this, this ball had paint on it, chalk on it, some substance that would come off from the ball onto my hand, here and here would be spotless. Because when you dribble, pass, and especially when you shoot, the ball never touches your palm. Okay? Now, you look down at your hand as you're about to shoot. You look for the distance between your thumb and your index finger. All right? I'm going to flip you the ball. Catch the ball like you're going to shoot it and bring it up and hold it right here. Okay? Now, I'm going to measure his span. How much of the ball is he spanning? I'm going to touch his pinky and his thumb, and there's his span. That's how much he's holding the ball, okay? There's yours, here's mine. Thumb to pinky, okay? Now watch. Watch the span get smaller by moving my thumb close to my index finger. See it? Now watch what happened to the ball. It's in the palm. And as soon as you have it here, gang, here's what can happen to you. It can slip and it can slide. Okay? So when you pick it up, you make this motion, this noise. Not this. It sounds like this. And spread the thumb out. Spread the thumb out. So that now when you go to shoot, I should be able to stop you right here and touch your palm and not the ball. As you go to shoot, I stop you right here. I touch your palm and not the ball. We don't want it down here and we don't want it up here. We want it in your, ha in your hand off the palm. Here's the first noise. That's it right there, okay? Now, we now take the thumb from here. Watch what it looks like. I'm going to shoot the ball to Greg. Watch what it looks like now after the ball's released. Remember where the thumb was. Now watch where the thumb is now. My fingers are still spread, but my thumb comes in. And here's why. If I let my thumb stay out, the ball may slide. But if I bring my thumb in, it forces the ball off of those two fingers, okay? Forces it off of those two fingers. Now, I can actually feel this basketball come off of those two fingers at the last instant. I can feel it. And if you're real close to me, you can actually hear it. So the second noise in shooting sounds like this. Watch. First noise. Second one. I'm going to shoot it in the air. Sounds like this. Watch. Noise. Listen. Third noise, the catch. Okay, listen to the catch. Doesn't sound like this. Sounds like this. See, the biggest problem with most kids when they go out to practice, they don't really practice. Somebody throws them a ball, they pick up the ball and they shoot it. If it goes in, terrific. If not, who cares? Then they practice these shots and the hook shot and the bounce shot and around the world and, and knockout and 21. And no, no, no. What you should do when you go to practice your shot, is set a time aside. You want to go a half hour? Fine. Might not be long enough, but that's better than nothing. But while you're practicing your shot during that half hour, if you would happen to shoot a shot and miss, stop and figure out why. 
stop and figure out why. The first reason might be the ball is, watch this gang, sliding on you. Don't let it slide. Here's how you avoid the slide. Spread your fingers out and do these three things. You ready? I'm going to shoot the gray. This is one of the best drills I know in order to teach shooting. Okay? This, this is it. <clears throat> Dave, every day of practice at my university, right here, I come out, blow the whistle. These guys got a rope and a ball. Three minute jumping rope, four minutes of stretching legs, and then we do this. Ready to holler to them? Shooting hand. And they do this. Watch, I'm going to build it from the ground up. Right foot forward. Off the palm, elbow under, arm like the letter L. Let's take them one by one. Off the palm. We just explained to you why. We don't want it down here. Look at my hand. The other day in the paper, last week, whenever it was, Reggie Miller going up for a jump shot. And I, I took the picture and looked at it. You ready? A lot of you kids just look at the picture, throw it. Here's what I do. I look at guys' hands. Now, he's a great shooter, as we know. Watch. Here's what you can see. A space between the ball and his palm. Okay, he's up in this position, and he's here, all right? Okay, now, ready? Second thing, elbow under, wide. Now, you can't shoot like this. Why? You can't shoot like that. Elbow goes under the ball. Third thing, arm like the letter L. Shot, catch, shoot back, right? Now, why do you shoot without the basket? Here's the reason why. You can concentrate on your form. As soon as we introduce the basket, what happens to some kids is they start taking shots that like that. They drop their hands. So we introduce this. We don't introduce the basket till later. We start off by doing this position here. Under and shot. Under and shot. Okay? Here they are again. Off the palm. Elbow under. Arm like the letter L. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why the letter L? So many kids, when they come up, they do this. And they make the letter V with their arm. They bring the ball back in here. As soon as you do that, you're starting to use only your arm to shoot the ball. This is why kids shoot bricks, because they just use their arms. We'll talk more about power in a few minutes. All right, now what we're going to do now is recap all about the shooting hand. And here it is. When you pick the basketball up in your shooting hand, these are the things you want to remember. Number one thing is to always have the ball off the palm. Now, this does not mean having the ball rest up in the fingers. It also doesn't mean having the ball laid down in your palm. It means off the palm. What I should be able to do is walk around and touch your palm and not the ball. Remember, it's not here. It's here. Now, the way you do that is if your thumb is spread out like mine is right now, I formed a natural cup. If I bring my thumb in close to my index finger, I flatten out my hand, and it makes the ball go to the palm. The danger here, then, lies in the fact that the ball could slip and come off this part of your hand or slide and come off the pinky. What you want to be able to do each and every time you shoot the ball is have the ball come off of those two fingers. So if we stop action in the middle of a shot, all good shooters shoot the ball with those two fingers. Not the thumb, not the pinky, not the ring. The ball comes off of those two right there. Okay. So the very first part of shooting hand is off the palm. The second part, get your elbow under the ball. Do not have your elbow out or do not have your elbow in. You must have it in a relaxed position. So as you bring the basketball up to shoot the basketball, the elbow remains under the ball and then you release. The last thing is have your arm like the letter L. The letter L, never the letter V. Once you make this letter, you will shoot the ball with your arm and shoulder rather than with your legs. So it's the letter L right here. To recap, off the palm, elbow under, arm like the letter L, and the ball is then shot with those two fingers. As the ball is released, the thumb goes from this position to this position. And the reason it does is because it brings the ball off of those two fingers. If you allow your thumb to stay out, the ball can slip. By bringing the thumb in, the ball is th forced to come off of these two fingers. Okay? So here it is. It's here and then there. And as we talked about, the noises that are made are these noises. Here's the first noise you make. You grip the ball in your shooting hand. Your whole hand goes on the ball, not your palm. Not just your fingertips. It's your whole hand. The second noise will occur 
as the ball leaves your shooting hand, it sounds like whoosh. And when it leaves those two hands, it's coming off of those two fingers. And the third one is the catch. The ball is caught with the span of the hand. It does not sound like this. It is, sounds like this. And those three things, off the palm, elbow, arm like the letter L, that constitutes the best way to practice when shooting the ball just with the shooting hand. The biggest single problem that most kids have when they go up to shoot a basketball is they don't know what to do with their other hand. Now, what do we call the other hand, son? The guide hand. Somebody said to me the last week at a camp, they said, Coach, you ever think about calling it the lift hand? No, no, lift hand, what's that mean? I said, no, no, ready? Guide hand describes what you're doing with it. You are guiding the ball to the release position. Let me show you the mistakes that young kids make. You ready? The biggest mistake, they put their hands too close together. Now, if I look at you, grab that. If I look at you and your hands are real close together, and I know his aren't, because I know this young man can shoot the ball. The first thing he did when he caught it, he separated his thumb. But if I flip you a ball and your thumbs are this close together when you go to shoot, chances are you're not a good shooter. Because with your thumbs this close together, you'll probably do this and shoot with both hands. That looked like your shot, a line drive banker? Sorry, bad shot. Why did I do that? Watch what I did with my left thumb. Okay? Now, we talk about pictures of Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller. The greatest picture I've seen ever for shooting is the most recognizable name in sports in the 20th century. Some people might say uh, Muhammad Ali or Will Chamberlain. Well, to me, it's Michael Jordan. And I never met the man, but I do admire and respect his game and his competitiveness. I also think he is a fabulous shooter. The last shot he took, the last shot he took in his career was against what team? Utah Jazz. Here's the scenario. They're down three. Jordan, driving layup. They're down one. Ball goes inside the car Malone. Jordan steals it. Comes up to court with the ball. No timeout, nothing. He comes up to court with the ball. Being guarded by the kid Russell for the Utahs. Michael Jordan gave him a little shove. He was allowed to do that because he's Michael Jordan. All right, he threw, threw the kid out of the way. He now goes out for his jump shot. And somebody for Sports Illustrated caught this on camera. Because this might be the last shot of the greatest player of all time. You ready? And I got the picture at home because it's in Sports Illustrated. And here's the picture. Faces in the crowd. You could pick out your mom and dad if they were there. 6.6 .6 seconds, right on the clock. Crystal clear. The ball is in midair headed towards the basket. And you know it goes in because he makes every shot when he needs. I've never seen a guy miss a shot under pressure. But here's what he looked like. He's in midair, and he's like this, look. He's in this position. There's his shooting hand. Watch, guy. There's his guide hand. He was like this, in midair. He actually hit the ground, and he was still like this, and then he went like this. And someone said to him, a reporter said, why are you doing that, Michael? Why'd you exaggerate the follow through? Just wanted to make sure it went in. And sure enough, it swished. Stockton missed the shot at the buzzer. His career is over with six championships. The greatest player of all time. There's his shot. Now, gang, don't, you don't have to listen to me. Just watch Jordan. Watch what Jordan does when he shoots. Watch Glenn Rice and Kobe Bryant and all these great shooters when they go up to shoot. They all look the same. They're all under the ball, elbow under, the ball's off of here, and they shoot through the guide hand. We'll talk about some guys that break the rule of guide hand position and why and how in just a minute. What I want you to do, though, is every single time you practice, first drill, Second drill, ready? Guide hand, shoot through it. Now here's where you put it, all right? Find the air valve on your ball, the air valve, ready? Take the index finger of your shooting hand, put it on the air valve. If you're right-handed, put the ball right here on your right leg. If you're left-handed, put it on your left leg. Here's what I want you to do then. Take a piece of chalk, take an imaginary knife, cut the ball in half. Slice it in half, right around here. That would give you half a ball and half a ball. Watch what you do with your guide hand. You place it under that line. Now look what you've done. When I threw Ned the ball, he caught the ball, his hands were separated. Watch. My hands are separated. Does this mean if a game started right now, would I do this in a game? Okay, where the heck's the air valve? No. Nope. Let's see what happens. Yeah. No, no, no. Here's what I would do. I'm nowhere near the air valve, but watch. Look how far apart my thumbs are. 
That's what you want. You want to separate your thumbs when you go to shoot. Separate your thumbs so when you come up to shoot, you can make this noise. Listen as the ball goes through my hands. The noise is the ball dragging through the guide hand. All right? Now let's talk about a couple guys that played in the NBA and how they shoot. One of the fellows I worked with about five or six years ago played with about six or seven different teams. His name was Tim McCormick. He actually was in this gym with me 30 different days during the summer. We were here for 30, two hours at a time. He was really into it. He wanted to become a better shooter. We worked and worked and worked and worked. He got traded by the Sixers to the New Jersey Nets. And the following year, he injured himself, and he's out of basketball. But by the time we were finished, this is what we did with his shot. Watch. See what I did? Watch it again. Anybody notice what I'm doing differently? I'm taking my guy, taking my guide hand off the ball. Watch it. I, I'm not as effective because my hands. Why would I teach Timmy that and not you kids that? Here's the reason why. Sure, he's got big hands. He's got huge hands. Seven foot tall. You say, not, some people will think like, well, big hands, that's an advantage. No, no, no. No. Many times it's a disadvantage. Next time you go to shoot, do this. Pick up a volleyball. Shoot a volleyball. So you little kids, pick up a softball. Try and shoot a softball in the basket. It's impossible because your hand's too big. Don't tell me your hand's too small. You don't need big hands to be a good shooter. What you need to do is make sure when you pick it up, you have the, watch, the proper grip. There's the proper grip, okay? Now, with the guide hand, it's on the side of the ball, so when you come to shoot it, you shoot through it. Now, with Timmy, no problem. With Magic Johnson, I never met the man. Here's Magic Johnson's foul shot. He can put his hand here, take it off, and then shoot. Huge hands, huge hands. Watch. Take it off, and then shoot. I can't do it. I can't. I need both hands on the ball. I need both hands on the basketball so when I shoot it, here's my expression, gang. Think about it. Shoot through the guide hand. Shoot the ball through the guide hand. So each time you shoot the ball, the ball goes through the guide hand, and you're in the same exact position each time. And it looks just like this, OK? Just like that, the guide hand. Probably the single biggest mistake that young people make when shooting the basketball is they put their guide hand on the ball in the wrong place. If I throw you the ball, and the first thing you do when you catch the ball and I say to you, act like you're going to shoot the ball, and you bring your hands this close together, with your thumbs this close together, chances are when you release the ball, your, your thumb is going to stay on the ball, causing a line drive shot. When the ball is released, it is released through the guide hand. The ball goes through the guide hand. The guide hand does not shoot the ball. The guide hand simply picks the ball up in the air and takes the ball to the release position, and then it stays in that position as the ball goes through it. And that's what you're after with the guide hand. Now, the place to put it. Spend some time practicing like this, and you will get better. Find the air valve on a basketball. Take your index finger of your shooting hand. Put it on the air valve. Place the ball, if you're right-handed, on your right thigh. If you are left-handed, place it on your left thigh. Take a piece of chalk or an imaginary knife. Cut the ball in half. So if I wanted half a basketball, I would cut on this line. Then take your guide hand, the same way you would shake hands with somebody left-handed, and put it under that line. Now, if you'll notice what I've done, I've separated my thumbs on the ball. This now makes it easy for me to shoot the ball through the guide hand. So the absolute perfect position when the ball is released through the guide hand should look like this. Without a ball, it would look like this. We don't shoot like this. Don't drop your hand. Don't pull it back. So many players, when they go out to shoot the basketball, because their hands are so close together, as they come up to shoot, they do this. Hurts the shot. Some kids do this. Hurts the shot. Other kids pull it off this way. Some kids put it here. Where you want it is in a position so when you pick it up, you can easily shoot the basketball through the guide hand. Now, with that in mind, you added another noise. And here's the noise. The ball will sound like whoosh, and it's the ball traveling through the guide hand. Proper spin, proper rotation. 
If I shot the basketball with one hand and we counted the number of times it spun, it would be the exact same amount of times as if I laid my guide hand on it. Because the guide hand never interferes with the shot. This is the same thing if we played outside and our hands got dirty, they'd be dirty up in here, all through here, and around on the thumb. But there would be no dirt on your palm on either hand. Because when you pick it up, the ball never touches your palms, your hands are separated, and it makes it easy to shoot the basketball directly through the guide hands. So this means that when you're practicing your shot, always look at your form when you're finished. All right, now let's talk about the, the line that has changed the game of basketball, and it's this line right here, okay? People say to me all the time, Coach, how about the, the, the shot clock? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It affects the game. There's no question about it. But this is it. This is it. This is what you have to learn to do. Now, you learn this shot, you practice this shot, and you can make this shot, there's a place for you on any team, on any single team, on any level. You can consistently make that shot, the coach is going to run offense right at you. There's no question about that, okay? Now, how do you do it? Well, the first thing you want to do is don't come back and start shooting from behind the line. That's the last thing you want to do because you start using different parts of your body. You want to start in close and gradually move back, okay? One of the drills that we work on here at school is this one right here. See if you can stand under the basket, take the basketball, and shoot it in the basket with one hand, okay? Now, I'm going to go faster than we would want our players to do it. We would want them to be before they got back to the foul line to actually take about 10 or 15 shots. Well, we're going to do this a little bit faster, okay? Gradually moving back. Just touching the ball with the shooting hand, all right? No, no guide hand. You say, well, wait a minute, why do that? Here's the reason. You touch it with just your shooting hand because you want to make sure that every single time the ball leaves your hands, it is shot with the shooting hand and not bothered by the guide hand. Now, does this mean if the game started right now, would I do this in a game? Greg hits me with the ball, would I go? No, no. I'd use both hands. Well, what I'm trying to do is develop myself so that when I come back, there's no difference in the shot from in there and here except for this difference. Difference what? Here. That's what we want. We want this when you shoot. Another way of doing it is, Greg, stand here. Uh, Brian, catch the ball. Stand right here next to me. Here's another one. You kids that are shooting foul shots. You're constantly shooting foul shots and you're always hitting the front of the rim. Watch. Here's the mistake you're probably making. If I stand right next to Greg, shoulder to shoulder. Hold that one, Brian. Now look where my shoulder is. I have moved my shoulder a full six or seven inches past his shoulder. I don't do this. I don't come straight down and straight up. What I do is come down and go forward. Come down and go forward. So now, if you're going to shoot the basketball for me, what I want you to do is I want to make sure that each time you shoot it, you're in this position when you're finished. Now, this position looks like this. This is what I call using your legs. This is using your legs. Now, you find yourself missing the hit in the front rim, Chances are you're doing this. Watch, gang. You're coming up, and as you shoot, you're back on your heels. Take a couple shots, Greg. That's what we're after. So now you start to miss, man. You say, well, coach, I've been hitting the front rim a lot. What am I doing wrong? You're probably not using your legs. Try and get yourself on balance like that until the ball gets to the basket. Balance until the ball gets to the basket. Balance until the ball gets to the basket. And one more time, balance until the ball gets to the basket. Good shooting. It's a big round of applause for Greg. That's the one shooting. All right? Now, let's step it back. Here's the thing. You ready? If you said to me, shoot some threes, but stay behind the line. Hard to do. Hard to do. If I'm concentrating on staying behind that line, I'm off balance. You're allowed to jump over the line. You're allowed to leave your feet and jump over the line. The, what confuses young kids like yourselves is this. When I was a kid growing up in West Philly, if you got fouled, you could do this. You could jump over the foul line. And they changed the rule. You can't jump over the foul line. Most people don't know this. It's because like a few years before I was in eighth grade, this guy was in high school, 
played in Overbrook High School, and then he went to Kansas, the Globetrotters, the Warriors, and the Lakers. His name was Will Chamberlain. And Will Chamberlain decided, the heck with shooting fouls, I will dunk them. So he used to go back, the referee gave him the ball. The first time he did it, people were going like, what is he doing? He'd come back and jump from here and dunk the darn thing. And people were like, well, what happened? So they changed the rule to stop people from dunking the ball. Now, I saw Jordan do it on television in the slam dunk contest. He jumped in the foul line and dunked the ball. So they're going to ch change that rule. But watch. Until somebody comes along and jumps from here, I'd love to see this, wouldn't you? Guy come running down the court, jump over here and dunk the darn thing. That's going to be worth three points the first time he does it. But they will change that rule in the next second. But watch. You're allowed to jump over the line. That's why when we run drills here, we have our players plant their left foot, the right-handed guys, back here. We don't want to plant here and then step on the line. We want to plant here so when we step forward using our legs, we're here and we're behind the line. We don't want to give the referee a chance to take that three away from us. So when you practice your threes, start in close, gradually move back, see how far back you can go, then come in, start with your shooting hand, and then add your guide hand, do the same exact drill, gradually go back until you're back at the three. And you will find that you will consistently make shots if you learn to use your legs. Now there's another facet to power that we want to touch on with you, and here it is. In shooting a basketball, we have an expression that goes like this. When you shoot a basketball, get under it. Here's what that expression means. I'm going to shoot the basketball, and I feel now that I'm under the ball. So many kids, we see kids do this. They pick up the ball off the dribble, and they try to start their shot from here. No way. The shot is one complete motion, and it comes from here. Let's say you pick it up off the dribble. It comes from here. I am now under the ball. In golf expression, there's a guy that teaches golf, and he uses the expression, get connected when you hit a golf ball. Here's what that means. I'm unconnected. Now, if I go to hit the golf ball, I bring my hands in, and I'm now connected. My arms are connected to my sides. It enables me to make a turn and hit the golf ball. Same thing in shooting. If my arms are unconnected, no power. You must make sure that when you go to shoot, your arms are connected to your side in this position. Now, from here, being under the ball, it's all one motion when you shoot. No hesitation. You come up and shoot all in one motion. Okay? So use your legs when you shoot the ball. Legs. Proper use of the legs. So many youngsters, when they go out, and even guys have been playing basketball for years, when they go out to shoot, they forget the fact that the power comes from your legs. Okay? Not many people can do this. As I come up to shoot the basketball and the ball going through the guide hand, what I'm doing is I'm balancing myself on my toes so that when I release, I don't come off the toes until the ball gets to the basket. So many youngsters, when they come up to shoot the ball, as soon as the ball leaves their hands, they're back on their heels. And invariably, what you'll find is your shot will be short. Now, when you're outside practicing your shot, do them in groups of 10. So when you look at your shot and your shot is short, one of the main reasons for that is you did not use your legs. Another area that has to be worked on is if I stood this way and stood, I would shoot the basketball. I don't want to come straight up. I want to come up and out. I'm making a move forward with my legs. So if this was the foul line, and if I was going to shoot the basketball, I'd come up and over the line in that position, balancing myself on my toes, never quickly coming back on the heels. Okay? Another aspect of power is the expression we use in shooting a basketball is get under the ball. As you go to shoot the ball, get under it. Have your arms in at your sides. One of the aspects of shooting that completely neglected is so many people think as they go to shoot, all right, I'm going to use my legs, but forget about the arms. You can't. You must be, there's an expression in golf called getting connected. And what that means is you are connected in this position as you take the club back. It's the same thing in shooting. I am now unconnected. I am now unconnected. But now I am connected and I am under the ball. All right? Right foot forward for right-handers. Left foot forward for left-handers. I'm a right-hander. I would be in the proper position right now to release my ball. I feel as though I'm under the ball. My knees are flexed. I'm going to come up and stretch the muscles in my calf and release the ball. Power comes from your legs. But let's not neglect the power it takes to keep your arms in at your sides and get connected. Now, what do you look at when you shoot, my man? Front of the rim. Uh, anybody do something different? Go ahead, Sean. 
You look at this, the hooks, the hooks that hold the net up. Anybody different? I'm sure there's somebody in here who would tell me, yeah, Coach, uh, sounds like I should look at the front of the rim, but I, I guess, guess what? I look at the back of the rim. Some kids say they look at the square. Here's what you should look at. Practice so much that every time you go up, your eyes focus on the front of the rim. Now, this is my basketball court. This is my gym. This is where I coach. This is where I lecture. This is where I teach. So I know every, but if I was at a strange basket, it would take me a split second to look at the basket and figure out the center of the rim. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand right in the center of the court and I'm going to walk straight in. And by walking straight in, I look at the net and I see this hook right here. That hook that holds the net up. That is the center of the basket. If I went like this and put a piece of rope on there and pulled it tight so it came right to the center of the basket, it would go right to that hook. Okay? Now, what's the last thing to touch the basketball when you shoot? Fingers. These two, put them over that spot when you shoot the ball. Take your two fingers and hook them over that spot. Gang, if you're outside practicing your shot and you shoot a basketball, and that basketball is off target, right or left, automatically look at your hands. Here's what they should look like. Forget the guide hand for now. Your shooting hand. Those two fingers should be right over the center of the basket. Every single time. And if you do it correctly, and if you can make that ball come off of those two fingers, and you can make that ball travel straight at the front of the rim, you're going to make every shot. You will make every single shot. You might miss one or two out of a hundred. If you can make that ball travel straight at the front of the rim each and every time. Now the mistakes that kids make are these. A lot of right-handed kids, when they come up for their shot, their right arm comes here. A lot of left-handed kids, they come up for their shot, their left arm goes here. Make sure your hand is directly at the center of the basket, okay? The center of the basket, all right? And I say, well, what do you mean by that? Watch. <clears throat> if you shoot a basketball, watch this shot. Tell me what's wrong with this shot. Go ahead, Sean. No arc. Watch it again. Watch it. He said, wait a minute, that ball went in. I'm going to make it worse. Oh, I tried to make it spin it. You ever see that one? That's hard to do, but watch. Hand grenade, brick, brick, brick. Why? Watch. Watch the height of the follow through. See how low it is? Watch this shot. A little too high. Okay? So somewhere between, watch, here and here is here. That's where we want your hand. So when you're finished your shot, Brian, jump up here. Take your shot. Right there. When you're finished your shot, what Brian should see is his hand still in his peripheral vision. Right? Now watch the arc on his ball. And that's the reason. Go ahead in. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Because he had proper arc. The ball caught part of the rim and bounced and went in. If he was a line drive shooter, which I know he isn't, that ball would have hit that spot and came back at him. One more, Brian. There you go. Let's have a big round of applause for my man, Brian. Now, the way to improve automatically or immediately is to make sure that you look at the correct spot on the rim. Now, some people will tell you, look at the whole rim. Some people will tell you, look at the back rim, the front rim. What I try to encourage our players to do is focus in on the dead center of the rim, depending where you're standing. Now, I'm standing right here in the center of this foul line. If I turn around to look at the basket, what I'm looking at right from here is the hook that holds the net up right in the center. That's the hook. What I want to do then is I know the last two fingers that touch the basketball are these two fingers. So if I take those two, what I try to do with those two fingers is put them right on the center hook. Now you're outside practicing your shot, and you notice your ball is wandering. It's moving over to the left or to the right. There's one to the left. I correct it, put it in the center. Okay? This will create a lot of swishes, but if the ball does catch part of the rim, like that one, it's still going to go in the basket. First part of the drill, gang. You ready? Second part, guide hand. Last noise in shooting. Ball going through the guide hand. Listen. 
Okay? Next thing is legs. Using the legs. Next thing is target. I want to make the ball come right down to my partner. Okay? Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to get like six of you up here. All right? You're going to get a partner and a ball. And I'm going to show you how I coach my team. How we actually coach my team. This is the way we coach the team. Okay? So we need a couple basketballs. All right? Jump up, grab a ball. Jump up and be his partner. Jump up, grab a ball. Jump up, be her partner. Jump up, be his partner. Right here, my man. Get a ball, Sean. All right, we want to put you under the basket, right here, and face me. You come out here and be his partner. Stay right there, right here. Okay, great. Take a seat, buddy. Get right here. Face Sean. Get right there and face her. All right? Now, here's what you're going to do. Back up two steps. Back up one step. All right, you ready? First thing, put the ball in your shooting hand. All right, elbow under the ball, arm like the letter L. Right foot forward because you're all right-handed. Now, what we would do right away is correct you because you had it in your palm. All right, good position there. All right, shoot the ball to your partner. Now, you should look up in the air at the ball. They're easy to see with these camp balls because you can see the ball actually spin. All right, grip it, shooting hand only. Shooting hand only. Elbow under, arm like the letter L. Here and there. Right foot forward. Separate your feet about shoulder width. Shoot to your partner. Now, I want you to do it back and forth to each other three or four times, but I want you to hold it. Break the rule in shooting. When you shoot a basketball, you should always look at the basket. We're allowing you to break that rule right now. I want you to look at your ball to make sure it's spinning, okay? Let's go back and forth a couple times. Ready? Go. There's good spin there. Finish your stroke. All right, good. Make the ball come right down to your partner. Longer finish. Longer finish. That's it. Now up on your toes. Get up on your toes. You're going back on your heels. Come up on your toes when the ball leaves your hand. Now, add your guide hand. Take the basketball and find the air valve. Right. Good. Now you have it. Okay? Get your hand on the side of the ball. Now this time when you shoot it, let's see what you look like when you're finished. Ready? Shot. Shot. Shoot the ball. Watch this expression now, gang. Shoot it through your guide hand. The ball came back down to your palm. Keep it off your palm. Time out. How do you get it off your palm? Here's what you do. Simply do this. Instead of your thumb being close here, watch what I'm going to do. That's flat. Watch what I'm going to do with my hand. I'm going to take my thumb and index finger, my index, excuse me, my, my pinky and my thumb and spread my hand. I formed a natural cup. Ready? Shot. Okay, that's it. See the position of your guide hand? Should be right there. Good. Shot. Get up on those toes and finish your stroke. Good one. Get up on your toes. All right, don't hesitate your shot. What you want to do is shoot the ball all the way through. All the way through, all in one motion. All in one motion. All one motion. Okay? Now stop. Give me one of those basketballs. Right? Now this is where the ball should be spinning. It should spin that many times as it leaves your hands. Let me have it. The reason it isn't is because some of you are stopping right here. Do not stop your shot. You are not finished the shot until you feel the snap of the wrist. And then that noise that we make is really pronounced on these rubber basketballs. Listen. Okay, that's the position you want to get in. Okay, time out. We turn the balls to the rack. Let's have a big round of applause for those six kids. <laughs> now, here's another hint for you. This will make you a better shooter today. Watch. Remember we talked about the air valve and this? All right. Now, as you go to shoot the basketball, let's say you're going to shoot from the foul line. Greg, you're going to shoot from the foul line. Before you shoot, remember we talked about getting under the ball. Before you shoot, look down at your hands. Look at your shooting hand. Here's what you should see. With your eyes, you should see thumb, index finger, middle finger, part of the ring, but never the pinky. You should never see the pinky of your shooting hand. Watch. If I now see the pinky, watch what happens to my elbow. My elbow is flying out, and here's the way I'm going to shoot, across my body. So if your hand is like this, rotate your ball to the right. If you're a lefty, rotate it to the left. Now, next thing, guide hand. You should never see more than thumb and index finger. And as soon as you're in that position, now watch what it does to you. It's automatic. It brings you up under the ball. 
it brings you up with your elbow under and your arm like the letter L, and then it just takes coordination and practice. Now, if you can learn to put the ball in the center of the basket, you're going to make shots. And now, the only way you'll miss a shot is if you're a little long or a little short, okay? A little long or a little short. So when you're practicing your shot, practice with a purpose, gang. Practice with a purpose. Snap the wrist and finish the shot the exact same way. Now, I'm telling you, if you do this, you will improve. I guarantee it. All right, now here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to bring somebody up from the group, and I'm going to show you how we would work with you if this was one of our players, or if you were a guy in the NBA, or a woman in the WNBA, or a college player, high school player, it doesn't matter who it is, okay? We always do these things the same way. So, Kia, come here for a second. And Taylor, why don't you catch the ball for him? Okay? Let's say we put Kia right in here. See, the thing that happens with most kids, go ahead, you shoot, Kia. Okay? Now move back a step. Take your normal shot. Now I want to just watch. The thing that happens with most kids is they come back out and they start shooting the ball right away from too far out. And once you do that, what happens is you start using the wrong parts of your body in order to release the ball. All right, one more time. It's the advantage that some people have, you come up and people can get, go ahead, people can get loose in a hurry. Sometimes it's not, it's a typical thing. Now watch, watch. I never met Kia, but here's the first thing I would say to Kia, and you kids can see it too. What doesn't Kia's ball do as it travels towards the basket? It does not rotate. It's not spinning, okay? All right, second thing we notice right away, and we're not picking on you. Second thing we notice right away is she's actually releasing it with both hands. Okay? So the very first thing that we would have you do is, you're a lefty, right? Okay? You would bring it up and put it in your left hand like we just showed you. Okay? So bring it up, turn the ball this way, and now you're like this. Left foot forward, and your elbow's under the ball, and the ball's in your hand, but just off your palm. Okay? Now take a step back, take a step back and shoot it to me. Right, see automatically how you had some spin on the ball? Do that again to me. Shoot the basketball to me. Okay? Now, what you want to be able to feel, Kia, is the ball coming off your index and middle finger. Go ahead. Shoot. Did you feel that? Okay. Now, step in here and take your shot, and Terrell will throw it to you. One hand only. Index and middle finger. Good. Do you hear that noise? Do it again. Index and middle. That's the shot. Now, you just were short, so now the idea is that. There you go. The idea now would be to tell them, gang. Tell her. Use your legs and use your arc. See the difference? Okay, go ahead. Use your legs. Use your legs. There you go. Now, we can notice her ball starting to wander. Left, right, left, right, left, right. What we want to do now is try and have her concentrate on the center of the basket. Now, for you, where you're standing, it's that hook that holds the net up. Okay, so take another shot. Good. Use your legs. Use your legs. Okay, there it goes to the right again. See it? Okay, now, as we jump ahead, grip it like with both hands. All right, now, we told you index finger on the air valve. Okay, now remember, you have it off your palm, right? This ball is off your palm. Get that ball off your palm, and your hand should be in this position here, under that line. Okay, now, if you're looking down at the ball, I can tell you right now, you're looking at your pinky. So what you want to do is move your ball so this happens. Now bring it up and stop right here. What you should look like is shooting hand, elbow under, shooting hand in this position, and there goes your shot. Now if you let me control your hands, you'll see the ball spin. Watch. See it? Okay? That's what you're after, that position right there. Okay? Ready? Try a couple shots. Correct. And one more. Correct. Let's have a big round of applause for Kia. All right, now, let's backtrack. Shooting hand, guide hand. On the side of the ball, thumb separated. I used to hear somebody lecture about shooting. They said, make a T with your thumbs. Wrong. Wrong. If you make a T with your thumbs, look what you've done. You have your thumbs so close together that automatically you're probably going to shoot like this. You're going to shoot like this, okay? Your hands are separated, so you shoot through the guide hand, okay? We're going to then work on our legs and getting under the ball, 
And I guarantee you today, if you would practice today and think about making the ball travel at the front of the rim, that you're going to make a lot more shots than you did yesterday. All right? And then get into your practice stuff like squaring your shoulders. You see, if I took a foul shot, if I took a jump shot, if I took a shot off the dribble, coming either way, all right, there's no difference. All the shots are going to look the same. But watch, because I'm using my dribble, watch what I must do with my shoulders. I must get my shoulders square to the target. So many kids, when they go to the left, if they're right-handed, they end up trying to shoot the ball and then jump and then turn. The idea is to turn and then jump. Turn and jump. So a good way for me to practice, if I'm watching somebody shoot a basketball, I stand under the basket, hit them with the ball, and all I want to do is see if they are square to the target when they're shooting the ball. Square to the target when they're shooting the ball. Okay? If you practice these things, you too will become a good shooter. I guarantee it. But the key word there is practice. Practice, practice. I don't play basketball anymore. I play golf. And I've been a 12 handicap, 13 handicap, for the last 20 years. And I will remain that until the day I die. And the reason I will never get any better, I don't like to practice. I don't like to practice golf. I loved to practice shooting as a kid, when I was a kid. But golf, I'd rather run to the first tee, put it in the ground, and swing. So I'm never going to get any better. I know it. I know it, and I've accepted it. If you accept it, fine. But I guarantee you, any single kid here, if you work on the principles that we're talking about right here, you will see improvement immediately. And I guarantee you, before you start your season next year, you're going to be a good shooter. And then tell me what happens. Then tell me. Greg, Brian, they've been to our camp a couple times. You can see what they do. They make all shots, OK? So the key to shooting is consistency and make sure you shoot it the same way every time and finish your stroke. And if you do happen to miss a shot, you have to know why. OK, gang? All right, now, you've been a great audience. I appreciate it. If you work hard at this now, I guarantee you, you'll have a future in the game of basketball. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. <laughs>